In this HVACR training video, we're going over does a mini split require a condensate trap on the condensate line? So this is a question I get asked a lot, and it's normally coming from technicians that install ducted air handlers that require a trap, and now they're installing mini split systems. And so this condensate line comes right out of the back of the pan and then gets pitched downwards, goes through the exterior wall and down the exterior side of the wall. And the technicians are asking, should we add a trap here or at the end of the line? And so we're going to be discussing why or why not coming up. And we're first going to look at our ducted air handler. On this ducted air handler, we have a supply plenum here. We have our blower motor back here. We have our evaporator coil back here, our condensate line and a return plenum. And so the air is getting pulled up this way. The purpose of the condensate line is to allow the draining of any condensate water from the air handler. And so you got to remember that this system is removing humidity from the air crossing this low temperature coil because it attracts, this coil attracts the humidity and the water condenses and then trickles out this way. Now there will be no trickling of water coming out of here unless this trap is filled with water. Here we see a running air handler with plexiglass in the front cover and no condensate trap. So you can actually look inside the PVC line and see that the water is rising. And so the air getting sucked into the pan won't let the water drain until you shut the power off. And so the next thing I'm going to show you is this, this tool right here. This is a rotating vane anemometer. And I'm going to hook this right on here and I'm going to show you why this unit, this ducted air handler, requires a trap. So you're usually going to see a U-trap like this or a P-trap like this on an indoor ducted air handler. Here we have a rotating vane anemometer and we're presently reading zero feet per minute at a temperature of 69 degrees. We have it attached to a one inch piece of PVC reducing down to our three quarter trap and there is no water in this U-trap presently. So now we're gonna turn this ducted air handler on and then we're gonna see what happens. So what you need to think about is that we're actually pulling air into the system if there's no water here. So you have to have water weight to block the air from getting sucked into the system and you see that we are at a velocity of about 700 feet per minute. So we're pulling in right around four CFMs right now into the system. And so that's not gonna allow any water to trickle down into the trap and out of the system. And what's gonna happen is this pan's gonna overflow and you're gonna have water damage down below. And so that's why you need a trap in here. We're gonna add some water and then see what happens. Let's go ahead and turn the system off now. Now if there's water in the trap, let's go ahead and turn the system back on again. After the blower motor turns on, you're gonna notice that this water level is actually gonna rise. And so that's while the system is running and that's due to static pressure in a ducted system. And so you don't notice any air being pulled into this pipe right here. And that's because of the water weight in here. This rose about 0.32 inches, which is the same static pressure that you have in this return duct. And presently we have 0.32 inches of static pressure. Now we're going to take our rotating vane anemometer and we're going to move over to the mini split system in order to see what the velocity is on the condensate line. Here we have our indoor wall mounted mini split unit and we're going to turn the power on. And so here we go. And we're going to turn the fan speed up to its highest amount. And let's take our rotating vane anemometer and we're going to set that right in there. And it's not going to be exact because it's you know, over here with a PVC pipe. So you can see it's around 300 feet per minute right there. Now let's go out to the outdoor unit and we're going to measure our velocity on the condensate line. So now we're on the outside of the building and the condensate line comes down the exterior wall with the line set down below the outdoor unit below the deck right there. So as you can see, even with our indoor unit at its highest fan speed, our rotating vane anemometer is not even spinning. And so we're reading zero feet per minute on the outdoor condensate line. So you really don't have to have a trap in order for the water to drain out because you don't have to deal with the static pressure from a duct. Remember these indoor wall mounted units are ductless units. And so no trap is required. If you were really concerned about maybe bugs or something like that, you could put on a dry trap such as that or something such as this right here. 
Uh, but really, you're asking for trouble anytime you add anything onto the system, especially uh, something like this, which is a, a large water trap. And so this is going to end up clogging over time and causing a big problem. And so you don't need to have a trap on a wall-mounted ductless unit. Just make sure that wherever the condensate's dripping at, it's in a safe location. So I hope this video on mini split condensate lines has helped. And if you want to learn more about mini splits, make sure to check out some of the other videos we have down in the description section below that go over all the internal components and full installation. And also make sure to check out our free resources we have at acservicetech.com, such as our articles, quick tips, calculators, and quizzes. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.